Hello, welcome to Making Basic Loops. I'm Lisa Niven Kelly, and I'm going to bring to you this free demo. We're going to talk about how to make a nice size loop, make sure it's strong, and most importantly, how to get even size loops on either side of your bead. That is this, the part that people struggle with most. Here are the tools and materials I'm going to be using. A nice flush cutter. I like this one especially because it's very flush and very pointed for getting into tight spots. A round nose plier where the jaws are round. You can see either of those plier jaws are round for making loops. You'll also see those with a little bit longer, not in the Lindstrom but in German, have a long jaw so it's a little thicker down at the base, giving you more options for different size loops. And a chain nose plier. We'll be using that for making edges, kinks, and holding the wire flat while manipulating it. I'm going to work with, uh, we got here some 6 millimeter Swarovski crystals, and this is 20 gauge wire. You definitely can use any wire, any size, to do your open loop, your basic loops, but a 20 gauge or thicker will be stronger just naturally in its natural state and it will keep a nice strong loop. So we'll get started with the 20 gauge. First things first, you want to make sure the end of your wire has a nice flat flush cut. Not all cutters are flush and they'll leave it a little bit beveled at the end rather than flat. So you want to use a flush cutter and use the flush side of the flush cutter, not both sides cut flush. And cut just the smallest bit off of the tip of your wire so you don't have a lot of waste, but you're giving it a nice flush cut to start with. Now I'm going to come in with my round nose, decide what size loop I want to make. I generally make a loop right about here, and I know that it takes about a half an inch of wire to make that loop. But I'm going to start out at the tip. So you want to hold the wire between the jaws of your pliers, and make sure it's not poking up at all. If it pokes up even just the tiniest bit and you make a loop, you are going to have a teardrop shape. Does that look familiar to you? Let's just cut that off and start again. So make sure it is down between the jaws of your pliers. You don't want to feel it poking up. Now I like to roll away from me. I can get a lot of movement that way and ergonomically it's the best way to go. And I push the wire against the plier with my thumb. This finger's just sort of hanging out over here, but don't let it get in the way. It really doesn't have any purpose. But really push here with your thumb to make sure that you really, really obtain this roundness of this loop. So pushing with my thumb here, I roll away from me. When you can't go anymore, don't try to get all tricky and keep going because you'll just end up twisting it. Loosen the grip on your plier, bring it back, squeeze, and continue doing that as many times as you need to until you have it touching like a pea. I just want to show a couple problem solving things right there before I complete my loop. Now here's where people go wrong. They've got this part down, not poking up, but they'll roll away from themselves and when they loosen to come back, they scoot the wire up the plier. Did you see that? Now I'm on a different part of my plier, and if I complete my loop, it will no longer be round. It's kind of like a funky long oval. So make sure that you stay on the spot of your plier that you began on, and mark it with a pen if you need to. So here we go, loosen your grip, or actually, sorry, squeeze, roll away from you, loosen your grip, bring it back, squeeze, continue keeping it on that spot until you feel it touch and you'll have a P shape. Now we need to come in and center that P on the wire so it's like an eye pin. If you're working with a 20 gauge or thinner, after you've completed your loop, you can come back with your round nose and pinch right there and kink. So you're grabbing the wire and bending it off to the right in this case and really pushing with your fingers. See that line on my finger? Then you've got your nice centered eye pin. Sometimes though with the heavier gauges you're not able to do that with your round nose because they may not be strong enough. You're wanting to do it out at the tip. I don't think I really showed that but when you kink it to the side look where I'm holding it sort of out towards the tip. 
So with the thicker gauges, you will need to do that with your chain nose. So let me show you that. Okay, starting again. With it within the jaw of your pliers, roll away from you, loosen your grip. Do that as many times as you need to until you feel it touch. And then instead of coming in with your round nose here, you'll come in with your chain nose. Especially with the heavier gauges like 18, 16, and thicker than that. So notice one side of my plier is in the loop and one side is right on the outside, as low down as you can get. And I'm gonna kink it to my right like that while pushing against it with my finger to get a nice tight kink. Then you've got your eye pin. When you kink it to the side like that, it will open up your eye pin a little bit. So just grab with your chain nose and rock it back and forth as you bring it in. Don't be tempted to do this because you'll probably smash it. So just close it like you would a jump ring, just bringing it in like that. So there's one side. Let's now do the other side. Put on your bead. And like I said in the beginning, I know from making this loop a gazillion times that it takes about a half an inch of wire. So I'm now gonna come in and cut it at a half an inch. Notice that the flush side of my cutter is facing down, so it's gonna leave this wire with a flush cut, and, I'll, and this one will be beveled, so we'll trim it when we go to start again. And just like before, I'm gonna come in with my round nose, grab it on the top, so I don't feel it, and roll away. Now you want it to come around and touch right at the bead. This actually could have gone a little bit further. Sorry. And now coming in with my chain nose, I'm gonna grab as far down towards the bead at the base of the circle as I can, but the crystals are very fragile, so be careful. And it really opened it up because it wasn't all that way, all, all the way closed. So I'm gonna come in and wiggle it to bring it together. So I just naturally make my loops perpendicular. Notice how they're facing, not like a figure eight. If you wanted it otherwise, if you wanted it more like a figure eight, you can grab it and shift it. 